Hello and welcome! This new player guide will go over everything you need to know to have a solid foundation when starting out in blocks cards. Just a heads up before we get too deep into this video, if you're looking for something specific like a very specific group archetype or mechanic in the game, then I would recommend checking out some of my other tutorials on the game or checking out the blocks cards wiki. This video will go over everything you need at the moment when starting out. Nothing too deep into it. Alright, to begin, we're going to be tackling one of the major aspects of the game. The actual playing field. What it's like when playing against an opponent. Regardless if you're fighting a player, an NPC, or doing one of the puzzles, this is going to be the playing field that you're in all the time. The tutorial does a very good job going over this and all of the aspects within it, but it really is important later down the road to get familiar with all of the different areas. The game has what it likes to call six key areas. This is all of the areas where a card can be positioned. The terrain zone, the field, the base plate, the graveyard, your hand, and the deck. Alright, to get started, the easiest ones here are the deck and the hand. The deck is all of your cards that have yet to be drawn, and the hand is all of the cards that have been drawn and are ready and able to be used if you have the conditions met. Now, without getting into too much specifics, the field is for your fighter cards, and that's all we're gonna say about it until later. Similarly, the terrain zone is very specific and only terrain cards can be applied here. Only one terrain can be positioned here at a time and a new terrain will simply replace the old one and the old one will be placed in the graveyard. While we are talking about terrains, we might as well go into a little bit more detail. Terrains are different from fighters and actions. Actions are one time use and fighters will stay in the field until they die. Terrains, however, as mentioned, will stay in their area until they're replaced or forcefully removed. Until either one of those conditions happen, the terrain will activate every single turn. The base plate is a very special area where cards positioned in it can generate studs. You can only place one per turn by discarding a card and that first card you discard will be placed in the base plate. Any additional cards that are discarded will be placed in the grave. Unless it's a new turn, then the first card will go into the base plate as mentioned. Additionally, any cards that have been used that are terrains or actions will go into the graveyard, specifically terrains that have been replaced. Lastly, any killed fighters will be placed in the graveyard as well. The reason I mention without getting into too much specifics is because there are a huge amount of cards in the game, specifically I believe it's over 4,000 different cards cards, and with that comes a huge plethora of different mechanics. Additionally, the field does act as a confirmation area, so if you do drag a, an action card or a terrain card up to the field, it will count it as you saying, yes, I confirm that I want to play this card. Speaking about cards, cards are going to be the next topic that we cover. It should be obvious, but in a game with so many cards, one of the best ways to learn about the game and get better is by reading the cards. Hovering over a card will give you a huge amount of information, possibly more information than what you might expect. If you're only expecting the health and power, well, there's quite a bit more. For example, the rarity can be very important. Knowing the rarity of the card can determine how many more copies of that card your opponent might have. Additionally, you'll have other aspects such as the cost, any conditions, and any mechanics associated with the card. There are a few small pieces of information that I want to cover real quickly before we get too far ahead of ourselves. All right, this first piece of information is gonna sound super obvious at the start, but hear me out. Cards have the associated color on their border their artwork. And that is true for every single thing except black bordered cards. Black bordered cards are kind of special. They signify that the card is unable to generate icons regardless of where they're positioned in a match. Black border cards are usually going to be ultra cards. They're the most common. But if you see a black border card, just know that it's not going to be generating any icons for your opponent or yourself if you're using it. While on the topic of colors, if you hover over your 
card, as mentioned, you can see a little color under the icon cost. That color is not associated with the color of the card. The color that you see is actually associated with the rarity. So if you see a blue line under the icon cost, for example, then that means the card is an uncommon. And white are going to be commons, rares are purple, epics are red, legendaries are yellow, and tokens are black. Tokens are a very special type of card. These can only be summoned into play from a different card. A super common example is going to be doges. Doges can summon in some tokens, and these would be the regular doge. Now why is this important? Well, if your opponent plays a common, you can expect three more cards. Common cards can have a maximum of four of them per deck. Uncommons can have three, rares can have two, epics and legendaries can have one, and tokens never can be placed into a deck. If your opponent plays a rare card, then you can expect one more potentially of that card to be placed later down the road. All right, I think we've heard enough about cards. There's only one last detail, but it's a little bit more on the side of deck building. Cards with a little Little plant symbol are called starters. Starters can also be indicated by their cost. Starters can be any color as well. The cost just has to be four colorless icons or less. What makes starters so important is that they have a higher chance of being in your starting hand, thus the name starters. These can be very beneficial when you need a card immediately into play on first or second turn. I promise we will never talk about cards ever again. Now let's move along to actual gameplay. Alright, when starting out you're going to be a level 1. However, when you level up you're going to see a range of levels. There's a cool little feature where if you fight players within your same level range, you get a bonus. If you fight players within that range, you get 50 blocks bucks bonus. This bonus also applies if you lose. So it's very beneficial if you're trying to grind out some currency to buy some new cards. Speaking about trying to get some new cards or currency, you can fight some NPCs. There's a huge amount of different characters all around the map, and a lot of them are going to be fights, and a lot of them are also going to be puzzles. The puzzles are especially great because they can teach new mechanics. Additionally, I would recommend you go fight all of the NPCs around the map. Not only will you gain experience, but you will also get rewards and complete some quests along the way. Quests can be great for getting some new cards or fast cash super early on. If it wasn't already obvious, there is a huge amount of different quests and rewards that you can obtain and complete. And if that wasn't enough, every single week you have a little pass. If you complete some quests, you progress on this little pass and you get some more rewards. All of these are great ways to earn currency, get new cards, learn the game, and progress even faster. If you, for some reason, still need some more currency or more cards, I would recommend inputting some codes. Codes are super common in blocks cards, and these can give out a huge amount of rewards. However, all of these rewards can actually hinder your gameplay if you're new. If you do go into deck building, I would recommend not putting cards that you just obtained immediately into your current deck. Make sure that your deck does fit criteria for summoning or discarding whatever you need in that deck. Basically, it would not be wise adding that one random red card into a deck filled with yellow cards. You wouldn't be able to summon it as easily or at all, and it will just hinder your gameplay completely. That is going to be everything you need to know as a new player in blocks cards. To sum it all up, make sure that you know about the board and all the areas, know how to read cards, fight players around your level, make good use of your rewards, and make sure your deck is compatible with all the cards inside of it. There is just one final piece of information that I need to make sure you are aware of. There are resources if you need some additional help. Over in the top left hand corner, there's a help menu with a huge plethora of different information and terminology. And if you need even more, Blocks Cards has a Wikipedia page over on Fandom, and it has a ton of information you can use. I hope this video was helpful, and I will see you. Yeah.